Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers, and the high-flying, fun-loving Regal Bird bring you now Ozark Jubilee. Country Music, the Jewel Theater in Springfield, Missouri. It's part two of this week's Ozark Jubilee. And back in harness tonight after his vacation is Mr. Country Music himself, Red Foley. Folks on the Alamo, let's do a little bit of San Antonio Road. Deep within my heart lies a melody, a song of old San Antonio, where in dreams I live with a memory beneath. Stars all alone. Moon in all your splendor, no only my heart. Call back my rose, rose of sand and tone. Lips so sweet and tender, like petals falling apart. Speak once again of my love, my own broken song. my heart all alone for that moonlit pass by the Alamo and rules my rules of San Antonio I got to unharness here. Thank you, good man. Thanks a lot, folks. <clears throat> now I'd like to have you take a walk with me right over here to a mighty sweet, pretty little lady from McAllister, Oklahoma. Uh, her name is Libby Horn, and if she keeps up going like she's going, I'm telling you, Hollywood, you better watch out, because she'll be out there. Libby, how old are you, sweetie? I'm 11 years old. 11 years old. And this isn't the first time you've ever been on television, is no. it, sweetie? Where have you been on television? Before? I've been in Oklahoma City on Channel 9 on the Eddie Coop Show for two and a half months. On uh, Channel 9 in Oklahoma City. Yes. Sir. And, uh, oh, didn't you have a, you just barely are 11, aren't you? Yes, sir. When did you have your birthday? Last Saturday. Last Saturday. Well, happy birthday to you. Thank you. Little Libby Horn, I want you folks to 
get a load of these eyes, if you will, please. And she's singing a cute little song called Tweedledee Dee. <laughs> still young, and I can guarantee you there's a lot more fun yet to come. Yeah. Oh, hi there. I'm Jim Norris. You know, lots of folks seem to think that I'm real handy around the house. I'm uh, not very good at fixing things, but I always keep my toolbox just chock full of cheery beery containers of Regal Pale. <laughs> Uh, you know, after a spell of repairing, it's real nice to have a nice supply of uh, cool and cheerful Regal Pail handy. And you can just uncork one of these cheerful cans and pour the light and happy contents into a gleeful glass, you see. And then you can just sit back and uh, <clears throat> just simply sit back and relax and enjoy that clean, cool Regal Pail flavor. So uh, why not wander down to your favorite tavern or store and fix yourself up? with Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers. Up in Chicago, Illinois, I was acquainted with a young lady, a singer by the name of Dale Evans. I had the privilege of meeting her a few times, who later went out to Hollywood to make movies and eventually became Mrs. Roy Rogers in private life. I don't know whether you know it or not, but Dale has written a couple of very inspirational books about her own family life. Just recently, she tried her hand at songwriting with the result being one of the top songs of the country now called The Bible Tells Me So. Personally, I think it's an unusually good song. It speaks a lot of truth. And what's more, I think you'll like the way that our Foggy River Boys sing it right now. Here they are, the Foggy River Boys. Faith, hope, and charity. That's 
the way to live successfully. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me to have faith, hope, and charity. That's the way to live successfully. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. The Bible says you must do good to your enemies. And the blessed Lord, you'll surely please. How do I know? Brother, the Bible tells me so. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just be real good today. The Lord is right beside you. He'll guide you all the way. If you have faith, hope, and charity, that's the way to live successfully. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. Like that. Yes, sir, the Four River Boys, and the Bible tells me so. And that kind of reminded me to mention that the song of inspiration that we've chosen for tonight would answer a lot of requests because a great many of you folks have written in to ask for a number called Supper Time. So we hope you'll be sure to stay around for our third half hour. But right now, we're in for a visit with the big <laughs> gust of wind that just blew in from Chicky Pin Holler, Arkansas. And let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Our friend Jed Starkey. Right here. Oh, Matt, it's real wonderful to see that you're going to play a real legitimate instrument for us for a change, well, buddy. Is, is that what that is? That, isn't that a clarinet? Well, I didn't know the fellas in the band give it to me yeah. and said uh, they told me what to do, and I don't know for sure whether I can uh, or not. I want to hear this. Well, uh, I, I uh, you know, the funniest things <laughs> happen to, to me. Some feller stopped me out there and he said, I'll bet that you are just one of them actors. Says, I bet that you, uh, uh, you never even been in Arkansas. You were never even been on a farm. I said, well, I sure have. I've plowed many a row of corn, and I've, I've even plowed with a double shovel and an old mule. I can even go further back than that. I can remember going out to the ash hopper and getting the drippings for Ma to make homemade soap. And I can go back further than that, I tell you, I have rolled shakes with a fro. Now, I'll bet you there ain't 10 people in these whole United States that knows what I'm talking about when I say that I've robed shakes with a fro. I just bet you don't know. But uh, he said, well, now, y y you never milked. And I said, well, I, I've milked. I sure have. Oh, he said, you may have seen a cow. I said, y y a cow. Maybe you think I don't know what a cow is. He said, well, what is a cow? So I just told him, I said, well, a cow is a female quadruped in whose countenance there is no guile. She collaborates with the pump in producing a liquid called milk. A cow's tail is mounted aft and has a universal joint. And all who come in contact with it usually have increased vocabularies one way or another. <laughs> The cow, now the cow hadn't got any upper teeth, so she bites up and, and gums down. Now she bites up and gums down, and don't laugh, this is serious. Uh, that, she bites up and gums down, and that was arranged by a, an efficiency expert in Washington to keep her from gumming up the works. <laughs> The cow has got two, two stomachs, the main stomach and the auxiliary stomach, and she goes out and eats grass all days and swallows it down in the auxiliary stomach, 
And then she comes in and at home at night and chews her cud. She retires to a quiet place where her ill-mannered belching will cause no comment. <laughs> and she chews and swallows, and that is converted into cow. Now, a cow is worth about 16 cents a pound on the hoof, about 80 cents in the hands of the packers, and about $3 and a half in restaurants that specializes in atmosphere. Now, the cow's husband is called the bull, and uh, he's fought in Mexico, lassoed along the Rio Grande, and shot all over the United States. <laughs> I want to see if I can play this here thing. I, I, I want to, you fellas help me out here. Give me, let, let's play. Last week I played I'm a Yankee Doodle, and now I'm going to play I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> I knew that there's something wrong with this thing. Uh, Red, I tell you what, uh, what do you think's the matter with it? I think it's, uh, I think it's too long, don't you think so? Yeah. You want to, you want a whole part of it there? I think, I think it's too long. Let's try it. <laughs> well, I think it's still too long. <laughs> I don't see no sense in this part here, do you? <laughs> we don't need that. Okay. All right. Let's see now. <laughs> well, there's no sense in any of it as far as this part here, especially. Yeah, I, I don't see no sense in this. This, this, you can't make a noise with that. Let's try this now. in the theater seems to be having a real good time and we certainly hope that you too are enjoying this week's edition of the Ozark Jubilee television's number one country music show you know you can always count on the Regal Corners Clarion Gazette to give you the news of course you can't always count on getting the Clarion Gazette every week you see some weeks there's just nothing new happens around here and they just don't put out the paper at all but I guess in most cases, we just have to resign ourselves to life's little ups and downs, but not when it comes to Regal Pale beer. No, sir, when you uncap one of these bright, bubbly bottles of Regal Pale, you know for sure that you're going to get the exact same light and mellow flavor every single time. You'll never find Regal light one time, heavy the next, or dry on Sunday, moist on Monday. Mm. No, sir. Regal's Brewmasters always make sure that this light and happy brew stays its light-hearted, fun-loving self, bottle after bottle, glass after glass. Any day in the week, you can always enjoy the unchanging, unmistakable flavor of Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers. Well, sir, this week has been a very special one for our friend Marvin Rainwater because his first record for MGM has just come out on the market. It's all for sale, Marvin, huh? Yes, sir. Wow, oh, boy, it's wonderful. Looking over the various show business trade papers, I see that they've all said some wonderful things about this record and very good reviews, but since it's you folks out there who make the hits, why, we're going to let you do your own reviewing of Marvin's new record by listening to him sing the side called Sticks and Stones, and here he is, Marvin Rainwater. <laughs> Bye. 
they don't pay my way. Now if I can't say good, then I won't say. I'll just try to live in a decent way. I don't want to outshine my fellow man. I'll just worry about mine and do the best I can. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will puts a low to heart and any kind of a song he sings. I, I may be just a little bit prejudiced because Marvin is one of our family around here, but I think he's got a real fine song and a good record there. Incidentally, the other side is another of Marvin's own songs that you've probably heard him sing quite a bit on our show called the Albino Stallion. And he'll be singing... Uh, both songs on a big 30-day tour that he's making with our good friend, one of the greatest in our business, Bob Wills, starting the week tonight in Birmingham, Alabama. A lot of success there, Bob. Well, sir, one of our country music magazines conducted a poll not long ago to find the best new instrumental group <clears throat> in country music of the year of 1955. And the first place winners were none other than our guests for tonight, the four McCormick brothers. And <clears throat> they got their picking fingers all limbered up. And we'd like for you folks to hear the little 16-year-old brother, Haskell McCormick, uh, play that five-string banjo. It's sort of a low start these days, but boy, he just fixed the strings off of it called Mad Banjo. Boys, let's hear it. Thank you. 
Clarence, let's point out to you something we consider very important. All right. Say, you know, some products promise to do all sorts of things for you. Well, now, for instance, like maybe make you into a strong man after one swallow. <clears throat> or turn you into a social lion after a single sip so that you'll be showered with party invitations. But I tell you now, drinking a bright, bubbly glass of Regal Pale may have those results, but <clears throat> Regal is designed primarily for drinking purposes. Now, what Regal does for you when you open one of these cheerful containers is uh, provide you with a considerable quantity of foamy fun and flavor. So that's all I'm going to promise you. For light-hearted, fun-loving flavor, it's Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers. Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers, invites you to join us next week when we again bring you Ozark Jubilee. Begins at 80 tomorrow night on ABC Television Network.